Hello and welcome to the training aspect of Squarco. This video is not to instruct tutors on how to teach, but will act as a guideline to ensure high quality lessons. The better your lessons are, the more students are going to book with you and recommend you to their friends. This video is divided up into three parts. We look at some of the common problems associated with teaching online, give some recommendations on how to deal with these issues, and also look at ways to constantly improve teaching over time. We have researched and tested online various aspects of one-to-one -one learning and come up with a summarised list of problems regularly encountered when teaching online. As we go through the issues, it's always good to ask, what would you do to solve this problem? The first problem is called monologue, not dialogue. Surprisingly, the biggest complaint is that the teacher does too much talking. Why? A teacher is keen to get their knowledge across to show that they're doing a good job. They need to explain as much as possible to make sure the student is getting their money's worth. However, the student feels that they have not tested themselves and this leads to frustration. Before we give you a recommendation, let's ask the question, what would you do to solve this problem? The second problem regularly associated with online teaching is that the student is not given enough tasks. The brain is like a muscle. The more you exercise, the stronger it gets. If you do not put enough demands on the student, they will not get stronger. Fewer tasks, actions, questions lead to slow learning. Unless the brain is required to make an action, it will find it difficult to develop new neuro-linguistic pathways. Again, we might ask, what would you do? Another important aspect of language learning is to bear in mind variation. Different parts of the brain are simulated by different sorts of learning and repetitive tasks fails to have much of an impact on the memory. The same sort of learning will only develop one area of the brain. If students are only doing one type of learning throughout the lesson, this is less likely to have an impact on their memory. What would you do to ensure this doesn't happen? Sometimes, a teacher can think the lesson is going great but the student is frustrated that they haven't fully understood the last point before moving on to the next. Our research has shown that students are less likely to work with a tutor in the future if they feel the tutor moves on before making sure the student has understood that point. It's easy to move on to the next part of the lesson without students understanding. This can be difficult for students if they're still trying to work out the last slide as you're presenting to them the next one. When teaching online, it is always important not to ask closed questions like, do you understand? As typically, students will say yes, even when they don't. Knowing this, what actions would you take to deal with it? In every lesson, students will find that some parts more effective than others. Surprisingly, you'll find that most of your students do not like giving negative feedback and will not tell tutors about parts of the lesson that they didn't like as that they are worried it will upset the tutor. However, this lack of negative feedback affects both the students and the tutor's rate of progression and this in itself is very destructive. So those are the problems. To make sure this video is dialogue, not monologue, let's ask the questions which ones are the techniques you can remember. We will give you 15 seconds to remember this. That's right. It's too much talking from the tutor, not enough tasks for the student, no variation, moving on too quickly, and a student unwillingness to criticise the tutor. And now for something completely different. Mm. Now you know the two key problems with teaching a language online. We have found the two best ways of dealing with these problems are looking at how people have done it in the past and asking yourself how might you find a solution to this problem. Let's have a look at five techniques we recommend to improve the quality of your lessons. Take note as we will ask you at the end what you have remembered. In this part, we are going to look at some techniques to deal with the issues outlined before and ensure that you're teaching a great lesson. 
In our experience, there's not just one way to teach a great lesson. Tutors have different personalities and styles, and each tutor should teach to his or her strengths and experience. This is not a training video teaching, teaching you how to teach, but a guideline to help you avoid common problems. Firstly, we recommend you adopt a question-led approach. Online teaching is different from offline teaching as it is harder to gauge if someone has understood your point since it's harder to read non-verbal communication. Therefore, explaining things, whilst of course is a cru crucial component of your lesson, it's always better accompanied with a question. One way to deal with this is to add the question onto every statement, e.g. If you are to explain one point of grammar, you might then ask, please now explain to me how this works. The more questions you ask, the better you will know how quickly the student is acquiring information. In a nutshell, the more questions, the better. And we think it's a noble goal to aim for 30 to 60 questions a lesson. The next approach is called mistakes are good. This might be a strange point to some, but we have found it to be a crucial component of effective learning. Students should be encouraged to look upon incorrect answers as a positive indicator of where they can improve in the future. If they seem downhearted by their mistakes, then explain to them that you can only learn by making mistakes. This should be drummed into students in every lesson. It's really difficult to get a balance right as you should aim for students to get 80% of questions right and 20% wrong. This will ensure that they are not frustrated with it being too easy, nor are they demotivated with it being too hard. The theory of chunking makes any impossible task possible. It's if something is too difficult, then break it up into smaller chunks. You will find your ability to chunk will ultimately determine the rate of your student's progression. Any mistake, regardless of what it is, is a great thing, and tutors get this across to students in different ways. By telling your students that mistakes are good, they all feel comfortable to try new things. At the same time, try to keep adapting your lessons so that they are getting 80% correct. A multifactored approach. Doing the same type of task repetitively will dull the brain and create ineffective learning. Conversely, using a media-rich, funny, irreverent lesson structure will create a lasting impression on the student. Creating a multifactored approach can be integrated in, into lessons using a limitless number of ways. For starters, make sure your questions are varied, including translation lists, what word is missing, how do you say the past tense, etc. An even more powerful way to have original and inspirational lessons is by using pop videos, songs, or any other YouTube clip you can find. Pop videos have a funny way of sticking in your head which in many cases may be annoying, but in this case will make learning more effective. Lastly, if you can send them something at the end, like a PDF of your lesson, then they will always feel safe that they can come back to it later. For a goal, make sure you have a variety of questions, something to remember and something to read at the end to ensure the lesson is engaging and memorable. Learning is action. Action learning is thought to be one of the most transformational learning approaches in, in existence. This is an educational process whereby participants will acquire knowledge and understanding through performing actions rather than listening to instructions or understanding static pieces of information. This is achieved by trying to impose certain ratios such as getting a student to talk 80% of the time. This is similar to the 80% correct ratio. Providing the tutor is adequately correcting the student, the more the student talks, the more action learning will take place. Once you think a student has become used to an action, it is time to vary the action to keep the student learning. If you do not think they have understood it, then ask them to replicate this action, i.e. for them to say it. Try and get your student to do as much as possible. Make sure they are talking and answering a variety of different types of questions and paraphrasing as much as possible. Planning to succeed. A clear explanation of the goal of the lesson and how you achieve it together will keep the student focused and motivated to achieve the goal you have set up. Students should be told at the beginning of lessons, in this lesson you will learn about X, Y and Z. 
and then you'll have a firm understanding of what their ultimate goal is and how they'll get there in a step-by-step -step process. E.g., your overall goal will to speak restaurant Italian. In lesson one, you will learn the vocab about different types of foods. In lesson two, how to order, etc., etc. So, those are the techniques we recommend to avoid some of the common problems encountered when teaching online. Like in the techniques, we are going to adopt a questionnaire approach and ask you to replicate what you've just learned. You've got 15 seconds. That's right, ask as many questions as possible, encourage mistakes, vary your lessons, promote student action, and implement planning. What were some of the goals associated with these actions? You've got five seconds for these. Yes, correct. Aim to ask 30 to 60 questions a lesson. Try to get the fine balance of the student getting 80% of questions correct. Use video, pictures, song. Get the student replicating and stating what will be learned before you start. Now for some light refreshment before we move on to the last section of the video. It's a fascinating question to find out how someone can constantly improve as a teacher. Here are some ideas about how you might be able to improve a little bit every lesson. Definite feedback. The first way is to get at least one criticism per class. This is a difficult issue because students loathe to criticise people, especially their tutors. A way around this is by putting a positive light on the question, like asking the question, how would you improve one aspect of this lesson? But tell the student it's obligatory. That way they will not feel like they are trashing their tutor. Ultimately, the quality of your lesson is much determined by the quality of the questions you ask. In a perfect world, every question should stretch the student a little bit more and make them think the questions should not be easy. Observing exactly what questions the student is getting correct and incorrect will give you a brilliant indication of if you are asking the right type of questions and if you need to adjust the difficulty of your questions should you need to do so. Observing the 80-20 rule will always act as an accurate indicator to if this is happening or not. A closed question is typically a yes or a no answer, e.g. do you understand this point? The problem with these sorts of questions is the students will typically answer yes so that they don't learn very much. An open question on the other hand could have any number of answers. What do you understand about this point? What do you find obvious or confusing about this point? These two questions will give a tutor a much stronger indication on how to improve and what is working now. It would also apply to your feedback at the end. Find out what works. Our last piece of advice is to find out what works. Teaching is a difficult job and you can cut corners by asking students, tutors and yourself what is an effective and fun way to learn a new language. So, in summary, you have learned today three things. Common problems when teaching online, Squawk and methods to deal with these issues and ways to constantly improve as a teacher. So, we looked at common problems of online education, including too much talk from the tutor, not enough actions, little variety, students not understanding the point, and students feel uncomfortable at criticizing the tutor. We also looked at techniques to improve teaching, such as adopting a question-led approach, encouraging mistakes, using multimedia, creating learning through action, and stating the lesson and course goals at the beginning of every lesson. Lastly, we looked at ways to constantly improve. These include making sure every lesson you get at least one way in which you can improve, ensuring that a student is getting approximately 80% of questions correct, asking open questions, and using students and teachers to constantly improve your lessons. Thank you.
Tell us what you think about this video. Was it too easy, too hard, too obvious, or unclear? As like you, we want to know if we are getting our point across. To us, negative criticism is positive. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to talking to you soon.